Pleasure to be here today. I'm Arnold Mooney and I represent the 43rd district in Alabama, that's North Shelby County. I'm also the Alabama American Legislative Exchange Council state chair for Alabama. Individual liberty and property rights have at times not been adequately protected under our civil asset forfeiture laws. We of course must strike an equitable balance between individual rights and public safety. We must, pre must preserve the ability of law enforcement to seize and keep the fruits of large crime activities while restoring the doctrine of innocent until proven guilty. The action of the Alabama District Attorneys Association today is extremely positive. It's a, such a positive step in the right direction and is highly commended. It will help protect the individual rights and ensure the presumption of innocence. A fundamental American principle, civil asset forfeiture, flips the presumption of innocence on its head. And it's time we take more steps to curb the practice which presumes guilty in advance of trial. The new voluntary database will clearly shine daylight on forfeiture activity in our state and allow Alabama legislators to legitimately evaluate and determine whether, an individ whether individual rights have been violated and to take, then to take those necessary corrective actions. I had the opportunity to carry the House version of civil asset forfeiture legislation in 2018. We were not successful, but we were successful. Today's evidence of that. I'm very thankful for having that opportunity and I want to really just say how outstanding the efforts of Barry Matson have been in spearheading this effort. As executive director of the Alabama District Attorneys Association, he's worked tirelessly, and he's listened to me call and pester him constantly, trying to keep moving forward. This will provide the citizens of our state transparency and accountability, transparency and accountability something we don't see that often, to restore confidence by creating a database that is documented and researchable on civil asset forfeiture activities, the Alabama Forfeiture Accountability System. One day I hope that we look back and we say that was the first step to solving issues in our state. What I can tell you is it has been an amazingly cooperative effort, a blessing to be involved in, something that I uh, did not have an idea would be occurring when we first started. But I'd just like to take time today to thank a number of people. I'll miss some people I know. Obviously, Barry has mentioned some that I would not know all their activities. But let's start at the top. Governor Kay Ivey and her secretary of the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, Hal Taylor, for working with Barry to do this. Senator Arthur Orr from Senate District 3 was the Senate sponsor in 2018. He worked tirelessly on the bill. We didn't come to the same conclusion in the House that the Senate came to, but what we've seen happen since then is we're getting a database that is searchable, that will be visible, it will be transparent, and it will cause, I believe, accountability in relation to the process of seizing assets. I'd like to especially thank uh, a number of people who have sent press releases, who have provided statements on their websites, who were involved in the 2018 and uh, new ones this year in working on it. But let me mention Lee McGrath, Senior Legislative Counsel of the Institute for Justice. He's been a tireless worker on this. Jason Sneed and Jordan Richardson, Senior Policy Analyst with the Heritage Foundation. At Alec, Lisa B. Nelson, our CEO, and Ronnie Lampard, who is the Criminal Justice Task Force Director. Alec has put their weight behind this process. They don't do that very often. Uni Smith, President of Eagle Forum nationally and Alabama Eagle Forum. Becky Garrison is here today representing her. Becky is Executive Director of Eagle Forum in Alabama. The Alabama Policy Institute, there are a number of people there. Today representing the Policy Institute is Parker Snyder in the back. He is Director of Policy Analysis. I can't help but mention Lee Hickson, who worked tirelessly during the 
legislative session in 2018. She's now with NASDAQ, but in her role as the director of policy, senior policy, senior director of policy relations, she mediated and worked in the mediation process to help us get to the point when the session was over that we could get here. What I'm here to say to you today is what you're seeing here is a voluntary cooperative action. How many times do you see that in the state of Alabama or in any state or certainly in our United States? I believe we'll be proud of this database and it'll give us an opportunity to look at and find if there are things that need to be dealt with, what they are, and then we can deal with them. Because I believe that the people who've been elected to serve this state have every intention of serving the citizens of the state and being strong fiduciaries for them in bringing about, bringing about liberty and protecting private property. I thank you.